Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's do some examples of how to apply taking a system of forces and reducing it to a single force in a moment or even reducing it to a single force. And of course, since this is a linear example, we can easily do that with a linear problem. So here we have a beam which is supported by two supports. Where the supports are placed actually does not make any difference in order to find the moment about any point about the beam. Of course, if we're trying to find the moment about these two support points, then we would have to know where they are. Notice that the beam is subjected to two forces, and we can assume that the beam has no mass or no weight to make it simple. So we have a thousand newton force acting upward, 800 newton force acting downward. Oh, I should say 100 newton force. 800 newton force acting down, 200 newton force acting up, and a 300 newton force acting down at the particular places relative to the left side of the beam. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the force coupled system at A, with other words, the equivalent force and moment at point A, the equivalent force and moment at point B, and simply the equivalent force where we can eliminate the moment at the point on the beam and we need to find out where that point is. Okay, first of all, we're going to find the resultant force. And the resultant force, since all the forces are acting in the vertical direction, the y direction or the j direction, we can simply add them up vectorially. So we can say that the resultant force R is equal to a positive 100 newtons in the positive y direction, a negative 800 newtons, that means in the negative j direction, a negative y direction, a positive 200 newtons, and a negative 300 newtons. Okay, if we add all that up, that would be minus 1100, minus 1000, minus 800. So that's minus 800 newtons in the y direction. So it's acting in the negative y direction. That is the resultant. Now, if we place that resultant on the left side right there, and so let's go ahead and do that. So here's my resultant at A. So that would be my resultant then that would be equal to minus 800 newtons, of course, in the y direction. And I'm leaving out the, the, the j notation everywhere to make it a little bit cleaner. So what is then the moment at that location? Because we cannot just replace all the forces by a single equivalent force. We also have to account for the moments that they cause. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find the total moment. So the moment about A is equal to, well, the 100 newton force does not cause a moment at A, but the 800 newton force does. It causes a clockwise direction, which means a negative moment. So it would be a minus 800 newtons times a distance of 2 meters. And of course, the direction would be, uh, let's see here, it causes, so it would be into the board, and that would be x direction is this way, y direction is this way, that would be the z direction or the k direction. So it would be two, so 800 times 2 times a minus, and that would be in the z direction or the k direction. All right, the next one would be 200 newtons. Notice that it causes a counterclockwise motion. That would be a positive moment. So it would be a positive 200 newtons. And the, the distance would be 3 meters. And that would be in the k direction. The next one would be the 300 newtons. Notice that causes a clockwise direction, so a negative moment would be a minus 300 newtons multiplied times 5 meters. And that would be in the k direction. Now let's see, what does that add up to? That's a minus 1600 and a minus 1500 is a minus 3100 plus 600. That would be minus 2500. So minus 2500 newton meters in the k direction. Minus means a counterclockwise motion. So that means we have a moment in this direction. And so therefore that would be a minus 2,500 Newton meters in the K direction. So that's the resultant moment. What we can do then, and maybe I should use blue on that. Let me use blue. Because that way you can see that it's the resultant. Since I use red for the original, the original vectors. So there's the moment. And I might as well write the moment about point A, and it's the resultant is equal to minus 2,500 newton meters in the k direction. There we go. So what we've done here is we replaced the four forces by a single force and a moment at point A. So that would be what we would call the um, force coupled system at A. 
We can now do the same at B, but of course to do that at B, we'll have to find the moment at B. The resultant will still be the same. The resultant will still be 800 newtons of force in the negative y direction. So the resultant is still equal to minus 800 newtons, and that would be in the j direction. I'll just put a little j on there like that, okay? So let's find the moment at this location, the moment at B. So the moment at B would be equal to, now the 100 newton force would cause a clockwise direction, which means a minus 100 newtons times 5 meters, because the 100 newton force acts a distance of 5 meters away from the point, uh, from the pivot point, and that would be in the k direction. The 800 newton force causes a counterclockwise direction, so that would be a positive 800 newtons, and that would be a distance of 3 meters away. So 3 meters away, k direction, and we have the 200 newton force which causes a clockwise direction, which is a minus 200 newtons, and that distance would be a distance of 2 meters k direction and so what would be the result here we have minus 500 plus 2400 that's a minus 1900 minus 400 that would be minus 2300 let me try that again that would be 2400 minus 400 that would be uh, 2000 minus oh that's a minus that would be a minus 1500 newton meters in the k direction so that means that the moment at b minus 1500 newtons that would be clockwise direction so that would be right here so the moment at b that would be the resultant is equal to a minus 1500 newton meters in the k direction so now we have the equivalent force couple at b we already calculated the equivalent force couple at a now how do we find the equivalent force and get rid of the couple altogether? So somewhere I can put the equivalent force so that the moment would be canceled out. How do we do that? Well, let's do it in reference from A. So let's say that we're going to put the force at some distance x. I don't know yet what the distance is, but I'm going to move it away from A, a distance x, and so my new, my new resultant force will end up over here. So this is my new resultant force, and I'm trying to find out what x is equal to. Now, of course, by moving that, the resultant moment caused by this force, the resultant force, should be the same of the moment here at A. They have to be the same. So what I can say here is that the moment at A should be equal to the moment caused by the r vector. So that would be, and if I take the magnitude of that, that should be equal to x times the magnitude of the r vector. And the sense, of course, has to be the same. So I know that the moment at A is a minus 2,500 newton meters. So minus 2,500 newton meters. Now, I know what you're going to say. Wait a minute. Then you put absolute value signs here, so you shouldn't have a negative number. Yeah, that is indeed true but I do want to take into account the sense of the moment, which is a negative sense. And so this is going to be equal to x times r. Now, what kind of moment is r going to give me? Well, r will give me a clockwise motion or clockwise direction for the moment, which is negative. So I can say that it's equal to minus, and the magnitude of r is, of course, 800 newtons. 800 newtons which means I can find x by dividing 2500 by 800. Notice that the negative signs will give me a positive value for x is what I want. So I can say that x is equal to a minus 2500 divided by a minus 800, which is equal to 3.125 meters. All right, 3 and an 8 meter. I should be able to do that also by using the reference point B. I can say that the moment at B the moment at B, and I want the magnitude of that, is equal to, well, let's do the distance from this direction. So this is going to be the distance, let's call it x sub B, with reference to B. So the magnitude there would be equal to x sub B multiplied times the magnitude of the R vector. Like that. So same kind of deal as we have over here. Um, I guess I should put the absolute values around it to make sure both sides are equal. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So the moment at B is equal to a minus 1500 
for Newton meters, notice the sense is negative because it gives us a clockwise direction. Notice that this vector will give us a counterclockwise direction, like this, going around in that direction. So we have this is equal to x sub b, multiply times the magnitude of r, and since I'm getting a clockwise direction, that's a positive magnitude. <clears throat> And let's see here, that would be R, that's positive, that would be 800 newtons, a positive 800 newton meters. Notice I now get a negative value for X because I am pointing in the negative direction. So X sub B e would be equal to minus 1500 newton meters divided by 800 newton meters. And so that gives me a value of a negative 1.875 meters so in the negative direction away from b notice if this is 1.875 meters and this is 3.125 meters together that gives me the full length of the beam so it looks like the answers do match so i can find the position where to put the equivalent force right here where the moment has been taken care of as well and so this is the single equivalent force which has the exact same effect both in the force acting on the beam and the moment acting on the beam. The moment at point A, the moment at point B can be negated by putting the force exactly at that location 3.125 meters away from A or 1.75 meters away from B. And that's how it's done.